Today I'm going to show you how to transform one of these Bachmann Owen 30 hopper cars from its factory paint to something that looks like this. So the first step is I'm going to take the car apart. I've already taken the bottom off this car and I've taken the little chains off the ends of the car here. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the bottom of the car off. Now we don't need to take off uh, these levers right here. Um, because we're going to paint those when we paint these pieces here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off these screws in the corners here on both sides. And to do that, what I do is I grab, uh, take a needle nose pliers and I grab this little plastic piece that's behind here. And then with a small screwdriver, we're just going to remove uh, these screws here. And I have to be careful to save that piece right there. And then get that small screw out of there. Okay, so we're going to do that for all the corners. With the corner chains removed, the next thing we have to do is we have to take the pins out that hold the uh, top part to the frame. And to do that, I just have the same screwdriver and there's a pin in this bracket here and in this bracket. And what we want to do is we want to push that pin out in out each end. So I just get behind here with the tip and you push it out enough so you can see the end stick out there. Try to get some light on there and do the other side here. So I'm just on the back side of the pin and I'm just going to push it until it pokes out. There, you can see the end poked out a little bit. Then we can get in there with the pliers and we can grab that pin and pull it out the rest of the way. There's one pin. And there's the second pin. Now the frame is separated from the uh, upper body and we can paint this part separate from the, from the bottom. Okay, here are my two um, cars that I'm going to paint today. I've already painted the other one um, and three other ones. So I have four painted and these are the last two here to go. Now I'm going to paint one of them exactly how I painted um, the car I showed you in the beginning of this video. And then the second car, I'm going to try a little bit of something different. I'm going to paint it more of a, a gray kind of steel wood look to it. Um, something I haven't tried yet with the colors. Uh, so you'll get to see if it works or fails. Um, just as I will on this video. And if it fails, we'll just paint it another color and start over again. For painting these cars, I like to use uh, acrylics and we're gonna paint the car a base color. And then to give it the uh, wood grain look and the weathered look, we're gonna use um, acrylic washes. The underframe of the car um, we can deal with later. That's usually just painting it um, some kind of under color and then putting some weathering washes over the top. But mostly I'm concerned with this video is just showing how to get a better wood look if you don't want to have a, a complete brand new painted car look. I think most people who are operating cars like this would probably be preferring a more weathered look rather than this freshly painted look. But, you know, choice is yours, of course. So let's get started with one of these cars. And for this car, to make it represent this car I showed you here, I started with a color that you probably wouldn't uh, have picked if you're walking through the hobby shop or looking at a an ad. But I've, I found this on my uh, paint rack and it's a tester's uh, acrylic and the color is flesh. And the reason why I picked this color of flesh is because when I was comparing it to raw strip wood, um, I found that this color matches well, car number one is painted. And this is the color I kind of settled on. It's kind of a light grayish silver color. And I got that by taking this old bottle of Polyscale Reefer Gray. There's the part number. And again, it's, it doesn't matter that it's Reefer Gray, just as long as it's an acrylic um, gray about that color. And then I mixed it with a bottle of this Reefer White. Again, it was just kind of mixed it in the cup until it looked about what I wanted. I didn't really pay too much particular attention to an exact shade. 
um, just getting it somewhere about that color. Um, you, you know, it doesn't matter if you maybe just start out, if you find a color this, I'm, uh, the, the final color you want, I'm just mixing what I have so I don't have to buy anything else or go anywhere else. We'll put that one aside and I'm gonna paint the other one that, that flesh color. And as I was painting the first car, I thought about um, that some people, they, they generally be like, well, you know, he airbrushed it and I don't, I don't airbrush, I haven't tried airbrushing and, or I don't like to airbrush acrylics, I hear that a lot. And they wanna use Flowquill or Poly, um, or uh, that other one, I can't, Scale Coat. But I really like acrylics, um, there's a, you know, not just for um, the safety reasons, but uh, I like the fast drying. It allows me to kind of paint this car without anything, um, any special consideration for making sure the doors don't close or keeping it mounted on a stand. And I'm going to show you that video real quick of how to how I paint this car. I'm not going to paint the entire or video the entire process because it's you know a couple minutes long. But uh, you'll get to see kind of how I paint this using very light passes. I won't put it on a stand. I'll just actually handle it with my hand. And you know I know people will say it can't be done, but it's worked for me for many, many years, and maybe it'll work for you and get you to start painting with an airbrush and maybe painting acrylics. What I like to do with these acrylics is I, I like to mix them, thin them a little bit, and I'm just gonna use this um, Tester's Universal Acrylic Thinner. I don't have a ratio. I, I've been doing this so long that I just squirt some in the cup and mix it up and, and just go with it. Now, I'm not going to be using any kind of spray respirator or anything because you won't be able to hear me. And obviously, if you're going to be spraying, you should follow the safety warnings. But I'm just going to do this this time here to, to show you how I do it. The airbrush I'm going to use for this is my trusty old Badger 200. I've had this gun since the very early 80s and served me well. I don't believe you need anything fancy for airbrushing especially for model train airbrushing. I don't have a dual action. Um, I just prefer a single action internal mix. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna use a color cup because I'm just gonna pour in a little bit of color into the cup and then I'm gonna pour a little thinner in and then I'm gonna mix it all up until I get the spray pattern I like. And I'm gonna just take a little bit of paint out of here. It's one of these. You don't have to use one of these. I just try to use this to keep paint off the threads, which you can see I haven't done a very good job at it. And I'm just squirting a tiny bit into my color cup. About that much how to do, just a little bit. Because once you mix this up with thinner, it has to go in the garbage, whatever you're not using. You can't put it back in the in the bottle. Now I'm just gonna squirt a little bit of this thinner into the cup. And I'm gonna use about that much, maybe. Let's see how that goes. I'll use the uh, pipette to Stir it up a little bit, maybe squirt it in and out a little bit. Now I'm going to turn on my compressor. I'm just using a cheap Harbor Freight compressor here. It should be quiet enough we can still hear over it. And uh, I'm just going to test out the spray pattern here a bit. Yeah, it looks good. So I'm going to keep it in. A little bit here. Um, I like a really small um, spray pattern because I'm just gonna be dusting this model here. You know the good thing about the acrylics here is you just wash off your hands with soap and water so I'm not even gonna use gloves here for this. And it basically I just start and I just start misting the car. That's it. That's all I do. It's just a bunch of little droplets. By the time, those are so fine and small that by the time I get back around to that side, those will be pretty much dry to the touch. Let's go again on this side, and this side, back to this side. I'm gonna do the uh, bottom here. Now, obviously you could be wearing rubber gloves to save from washing your hands, but where's the fun in that? Okay, so I got about that much there. You, you want to spray from multiple angles, so you can see I sprayed this way, and I turned it around and I sprayed this way. Now I'm just going to grab this here by the end so that the doors open up, and I'm going to spray inside that door, and inside that end, and across that floor, 
Try to get this hose to stop making that annoying sound there. And spray here. Back in here. And I'm just gonna really turn this car all around. Kind of get all the nooks and crannies. Now you can see the ghost pattern left in the end, so now I'll spray it back on the end with the doors open. And I'm just, again, just making these ultra light glasses on this car. And I'm just feathering it all together and just working my way around. You know, again, my spray pad is really small. I'm just making just a dusting on here. And as we keep going around, you'll see it'll become more and more opaque as we go. and don't make it heavy. And make sure you just get everything, just keep going around the car. You'd be surprised at how smooth this acrylic will lay out doing this. You don't need to have a big wet coat on there. Just keep building up all these really small coats. You know, and again, like I said, they dry so fast. I got a little splatter on my gun there. If you're getting that splatting, you're probably not mixed thin enough, so I'm going to put a little bit more thinner in there. A few more drops. A little scoring, I guess, will work too. Mix it up a little bit more. Sometimes I'll put my finger over the gun and blow it back in a cup a little bit, being really gentle with the button. Out a lot smoother. Oh, oh, this now. oh well. It'll all blend in. The acrylics just work out so well. Uh, you don't have to worry about those drops. They'll look like drops when they're wet, and then you'd be surprised how they'll just be gone when they dry. So you can see this is going pretty fast. Because we're going to do this with washes, we don't have to be really perfect on the coverage of this car. Just get it good. If you touch a few spots that are wet, just spray over them. We'll just wear them out. So I think that's... Uh, oh, let me get off the camera there a little bit. Sorry about that. It's uh, hard to look at the model and look at a camera. You just want to make sure you get it all. One of the things you want to do with acrylics too is you don't want to stop spraying too long. If you're going to pause for any number of times, if you want to let this dry a little bit before you put on the last final coat, I'll usually screw the needle in all the way immediately. And then I may let it sit and then I'll come back and open the needle back up. If you don't do that, you will not be spraying within a few seconds. This stuff dries so fast in these small tips and that metal, you'd be surprised at how good acrylics bond to metal all right i think that's pretty good i'm just going to leave it like that i think that's about as much as i want to do here on this car and then we'll uh we'll let these dry now i'm going to let these dry a while i'm going to probably let these dry till tomorrow so this is not a one day process i want to make sure the acrylics are good and set before i start rubbing uh, washes on top of them so we'll pick this up tomorrow when these cars have had a night to dry. It's day two here on painting or uh, doing the washes on these Bachman Owen 30 cars. And as you can see, a little bit of strange things going on with this one here. I'm trying an experiment uh, since this color is going to be an experiment anyways. I thought I would try painting some knot holes underneath the wash. I saw this in a logging mining annual magazine um, where a guy painted some um, knots in a 
caboose and then he put a paint over the top and it really looked a lot like knots so I thought I'd just throw some black dots around the car um, to see what happened. Another thing I did was I just painted one board a different color, a couple on the inside and we'll see how that ends up working out. Um, this one is the um, flesh paint that we painted on. I didn't do anything else to it. I just left it all one color. So for the washes here, what I'm going to start with is I actually only use two colors most of the time for this. They're both Liquitex Basic acrylics in a tube. Got black and burnt umber. I've got my uh, blue washer fluid here. I just poured in the cap. This is regular old blue windshield washer fluid for a car. And then I'm going to be mixing on this piece of um, scrap styrene here. You want to be doing this on something that the water won't absorb into, so don't use a piece of plastic or a piece of paper. Use something plastic or some coated paper. Um, I'm just going to use this black or this white piece of plastic and wash it off when I'm done. So we don't need to put a lot out here. I'm just going to put a couple dots on the um, piece of plastic here. Okay, just small amounts. <clears throat> and then the brush here is just, I'm using on this particular one, is just a flat, I guess it's a number six brush. And I'm gonna start out with the one that I know, uh, that I've already done a car of. And the way these washes work, uh, and this can work on pre-painted cars, uh, you'll just probably wanna put a flat finish, like a doll coat on them. I haven't put anything over this. This is just a straight model master acrylic. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of brush out a little bit of each color here. And we're gonna make just kind of a brownish, darker brown color almost. So you can see the kind of the color I've got going on here. And then I'm gonna add some of the windshield washer fluid into here. So what we're looking for for consistency and you, and you want to maybe mess around with this a little bit until you get the one that works for you. But what I like to do is to get about this kind of consistency. It's semi-transparent, but it covers well. And we're going to just brush this on the whole car. So I'm going to come in here and just grab some of this. And I'm just going to start working. Now this car has grain cast into it, which will help. Um, set off this wash even more and so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here and you can see I'm not going to get too careful on speed sorry for bumping the camera there but I am going to make sure I cover everything I'm not worrying about the metal straps that are here and here and on the ends because those are going to get painted a different color later anyways Keep trying not to bump that camera there. Now, this is going to dry lighter than this. And you'll probably end up coming back and doing another wash. Until you get comfortable with the way the wash is dry, I wouldn't try to be too aggressive with them. Again, not that you can't repaint them and uh, start over again. Um, but... If you get real aggressive with it, you may end up not liking how dark it turns out. But you do want to cover everything because even though this is a wash, it won't exactly, this is a really thick wash and it won't run down into everything. And now what you can do is you can darken up a few places here. You just don't want to get the brush too wet. If you get the brush too wet, you're going to want to dry it off a little bit and then come back in here. And if your mix is too wet, you want to pull some more color into it. Again, we're kind of going with this more transparent look here. And you can see, I would probably say that in this spot here, in the middle there, it was too wet. Um, I could come in here and, and just throw some more in there and maybe it'll dry okay. There's a chance it might not, it might be too thin yet, and we'll just have to come back. So I'm gonna go around this car just trying to keep my fingers out of it as much as I can. And just 
keep applying this this wash. Hopefully I don't get motion sickness by me keep bumping the camera with my uh, back of the brush here. I'm trying to keep it close so you can really see what I see here. But it is right between me and the car, so it's a little bit awkward uh, working around this thing. So basically I'm trying to look around it while I'm trying to brush this on and not trying to block the camera with my hand. So this, this you might want to go, you experiment too, um, you can add some black in here and there in some places there if you want to get it, you know, more more like rotted wood there. Don't go up and down like this though. Make sure you drag it with the grain of the wood. So I'm going to go around it and I'm going to get these ends of the car here. And uh, now I'm going to do, oops, I can see I dumped uh, my car I must have touched it in the um, acrylic puddle there so we'll just brush that out and I'll dry that off so it what's interesting about these cars is they have grain cast in the middle and on all the sides but they don't cast it on the inside of the ends but we can kind of help that appearance by mixing this stuff even thicker yet. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just start at one end and drag my brush along. And the brush, you can see, if I can get my finger out of the way there, will add the grain strokes. Just try to stay as straight as you can and brush along in there. You can even add some really strong colors here and there. To help give it some grain. I'm gonna come back and get the other end here. And if you get it kind of slapped on like that because you were stabbing it around, you can just come back for a final brush over to get it uh, smoothed out. So we can let that dry, try not to touch it. One thing you don't really want to do is you don't want to stop with edges like that because they will show up. So I'm going to try to grab this in a different way here. And I'm going to now put the wash on the bottom. I can thin it back out again here because there is grain in the bottom. And we can we can even make this probably darker yet in the in the bottom. Now one of the nice things about mixing these right here on the car is that no two cars are going to be alike. And that's one of the things that's you want them similar in some cases, but not identical. There are cases where you may want one that's really extremely different, but in a lot of times you want them to have a similar style, but not necessarily be identical. And using the using these washes of the similar colors, even though we have a, a different base color, the washes this wash here will kind of tie all these cars together. You can see this side's already drying pretty good, but to me it's a little too light. Um, I don't want to come over it yet with another wash because even though it looks dry, it can lift at this stage. So I want to let that dry for a little while longer before I come back with a second wash over it. But here's the other side I haven't done yet. But I'm going to try to get in here and do this side here. You can kind of see this spot right there where that uh, where that dip where I touched it to that black paint. And this is what I'm talking about is it's 
it's relatively dry, so it's going to make a hard edge. I could keep working at it, and I might be able to loosen that up a little bit. There, you can see it's kind of disappearing now. I think that's good enough. Again, I'm, I'm trying to get in everything, and then I'll go back and give it the horizontal strokes. Okay, so I think the only thing I have left to do here is the insides. And again, I want to do it before um, things like that dry. So I'll come in here and get the inside. I'm actually going to try to open this up a bit here. Because if I would have left that closed, whoops, you'll see that there's a blank spot right there. We want to get all those edges. Okay, that's good for that side. I'm going to get this last side here. And then we will uh, leave the bottom for a little later on uh, when the sides dry enough that we're not disturbing them. This is much easier to do when there's not a, something sitting right in your face, blocking your view. Okay, I'm going to let this one sit, and we can come back and look at it in a little bit. We'll see how this uh, strange gray one's going to turn out here with the case of chicken pox. I have no idea how this one's going to turn out. So we're going to cover that in. I might get pretty aggressive with this one. Simply because I think I'm going to end up repainting it anyways. I think that looks a little bit weird, but maybe I'll be surprised. So I'm not going to sit here on the camera and finish this one. I'll finish it off camera and see how it goes. Okay, it's the next day, and actually it's a couple days afterwards, and I did not like the way the knot car was working out, uh, the one I painted the simulated knots, so I gave it a quick uh, brush over of this um, slate gray color and I just used a brush on this time I didn't spray it I just brushed over everything that was there and it actually kind of has a really neat look if you uh, if that's the look you're going for it kind of looks pretty neat over here I wanted to show you something uh, here's two different sides this side has two coats of the same wash and I did it the same day I, I had waited till I was done working on the gray car and I just went back and washed this one side just so I could let them both dry and show you that this is with one coat of the wash I did totally dry and this is two coats and again it would just depend on the look that you're going for if you if this is the look you want then you stop at one coat if you want a darker you just keep going and you can just keep building these up until you get to the point um, where you like it but you have to stop and let it dry because it will dry lighter than what you think it's going to dry so i'm going to go ahead and give this another wash and i'm probably just going to leave this uh, the way it is i kind of like that one even though it's it's lighter than the other cars it still has a nice um you know be a nice look to it and then after that's done i'll go and i'll paint all the metal parts on here uh, with a brush but this car this car here i'm now going to give a wash over this and i think i'm going to go a little lighter with this wash and see what happens i don't, I don't know i may have some fun with this car and do a few more things and uh, we'll just kind of see where this one goes so i've got some more acrylic here and i'm going to go ahead and and just make um make up some more wash real quick just getting that muddy brown again 
about that consistency there. I'm just gonna go ahead and go back at, at this car. Probably get this a little darker here. A little more black, it's a little too brown. So you can see that that's darker than this, but, but this top one will dry looking like that. So I'm going to finish up the rest of the car, then I'll go back and put a wash in this car and we'll see how it looks. Well, it's been a day and I let this car dry here. This was the gray car and you can see the difference it looks now compared to the car that was washed in the, um, the flesh color. So I'm not exactly happy with that. Um, I didn't get the end, so you can see kind of where I started. Uh, not that that wouldn't be a good looking color, but it's just completely different from that. I think I want to get some of the brown tones in there. So I'm going to go back and do another wash quick on this and hit the ends with something because I forgot them. And I guess uh, do the bottom too. So we'll see how this is going to turn out. Um, I'll just mix up some more of the uh, the wash here with a little more brown and this time I'm going to grab this bigger brush uh, up to this point I've been using a small brush and it doesn't really matter um, what brush you use as long as you can get into the spaces you need but with this car uh, this brush is plenty fine I can get into all the small spaces and if I have to I'll just pull out the the other brush again so um, again you know same thing just mix it up and just go on and start up applying it Okay, so here is the next day on the gray car, and I think I'm going to leave it um, just the way it is. It didn't go exactly where I thought it was going to go, um, but it is a good color. Um, here's the one that was done with the flesh as the base, and they're similar, um, but they are different enough. Um, maybe some dry brushing on here um, might bring it back to kind of where I was hoping to go. I was kind of hoping to go with that kind of silvery gray wood color. Uh, but this is a good color. I'm, I'm okay with this. I'm not sure if I'll try to go farther with it because I want to kind of move on. And um, That's kind of the way these washes go is you just try a few here and there. Um, they go really quick. It takes just a minute to apply a wash and then set it aside and let it dry. So you can usually be doing washes while you're working on other things. You just throw a little paint on and, and go on to something else and then see how it goes. And the, the washes are so thin, if you don't like it, you paint over it and start over again. It's, you know, not the the um, end of the world if it doesn't work out right. I did do one little thing to this car, though, is I did take and give it a wash off camera of a little bit of this um, yellow ochre I had. I was looking through some pictures and noticed that the grays kind of had of a a little bit of a yellowy color to some of them and so I, I actually mixed up such a minor minor amount of, of the yellow ochre it was this right here and washed over there it almost was undetectable but I think in just a certain angle so you can kind of see it come through and that's kind of what I was going for with it now it's I tested on the bottom I'm probably going to do a, a darker wash on the bottom here um, but think for now you can kind of see I guess a little bit on the inside there uh, so I think I'm just going to stick with that and move on because I want to do I want to paint the metal parts on here and do another kind of wash on these cars so I'm going to be done with the body washes and then just move on